What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we are on chapter two in our series on the SSI Enriched Air Nitrox Program. And just like we said in chapter one, please do not use this video as a way for you to go out and dive nitrox. We would like for you to simply use our video as a review guide to help you pass your SSI Enriched Air Nitrox Program. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into chapter two of your nitrox program. Now we're just going to go ahead and continue on where we left off in chapter one and what we're going to start with is partial pressure. What is partial pressure? How do we calculate it and things like that? So first of all, partial pressure is nothing more than part of a whole. So if you have a blend of gas, let's say it's standard breathing gas with air or oxygen and nitrogen, which was simply what we call air, 21% of that mixture is going to be your oxygen partial pressure. 79% of that mixture is going to be your nitrogen partial pressure. So in say nitrox 32, 32% will be the oxygen partial pressure, and that's how we get the name of 32% nitrox, and 68% will actually be your nitrogen partial pressure. Now, there are several things that we can use with this number. We can actually calculate our maximum operating depth. We can calculate our best mix and things like that, which we'll see later on throughout this series. But that's what we're talking about by the actual partial pressure. It's just whatever the oxygen content or the nitrogen content is that makes up, say, that standard breathing gas or, say, enriched air nitrox. Now that we understand what the partial pressure is, we need to understand how the partial pressure changes as we descend in the water column. As we increase atmospheric pressure, the effect of that gas is going to go up and so will the actual partial pressure. So let's say we have 32% here at the surface. When we get to a depth of 33 feet, which is two atmospheres, you're basically breathing 64% at that depth of 33%. So every time we increase our atmospheric pressure by one, we are either double, tripling, or quadrupling, say the partial pressure of that gas based off whatever atmospheric pressure we're at. Now, one of the questions that you actually have to ask yourself, is a richer blend better for you? A richer blend simply means a higher partial pressure of O2. So is 32% really better than 21%? Is say 40% better than 36% and so forth and so on? Well, we can actually calculate the best mix for whatever given depth that we're going. But there are several factors that we need to know up front or several equations that we actually need to understand before we actually calculate what is gonna be our best mix for the depth we're going to. So we've actually already made several videos in the past showing you how to calculate your best mix and what the um, partial pressure of O2 is gonna be at any given depth and what the maximum operating depth is as well. But in short, your best mixture is going to be the mixture that you calculate for any given depth. And all you've gotta do is convert your depth into atmospheric pressure. All you do is take your depth, divide it by 33 and add one to it. 33 is what a atmosphere is. And then we add the constant atmosphere back from the surface and that's going to give you your atmospheric pressure at any given depth. Now, once you've done that, you simply take 1.4 and divide it by your atmospheric pressure. That 1.4 is the maximum partial pressure of O2 at any given depth that we never want to exceed, especially at a recreational limit. So we take 1.4, divide it by our atmospheric pressure of whatever depth we're at, and that will actually calculate the best mixture for that given dive at that given depth. Now, since that we calculated our best mix for a given depth, we can also help eliminate what's called oxygen toxicity. Even though oxygen in itself is good for us, at higher partial pressures, oxygen can become very toxic and we can develop what's called oxtox or oxygen toxicity. And there's many different symptoms to oxygen toxicity, but the main one there is convulsions. Once your body reaches a certain amount of oxygen, it will convulse and there's really nothing you can do to control that. So we want to make sure that we eliminate eliminate that by staying within our maximum operating depth there and making sure we're using the right blend. Well, how do we determine what our maximum operating depth is? We can use the same formula that we did earlier, but instead of using atmospheric pressure, we're actually going to use the blend of gas that we want to breathe. So if we're at say 1.4 is our maximum oxygen partial pressure, we're going to divide that out by whatever blend we're using and that will actually tell us what our depth rating is for that 
that specific blend. So we take 1.4, divide it by whatever partial pressure of O2 you're breathing, and that'll simply give you an atmospheric pressure. Now we do need to convert that atmospheric pressure back into depth, and that's pretty simple to do. All you do is simply minus one from that calculation and multiply it by 33, which is what an atmosphere is, and that will actually give you your maximum operating depth for that blend. Now, just as a quick summary for chapter two, we talked about what partial pressures are and how we actually state what a nitrox blend is. We also talked about the best mix for a given depth, and we even talked about the maximum operating depth of any mixture out there, and we showed you two different formulas that you can use. I'll list those formulas down below if you need a little bit of extra help remembering them. Plus, we've made videos in the past where we break down these formulas and show you just how easy it is to actually utilize these formulas. So make sure you check those videos out as well. But guys, that's going to do it for chapter two. We've got two more chapters coming up, so definitely stay tuned. And once again, please do not use this video as a way for you to go out and dive nitrox. Simply use it as a way to review for your SSI and Rich Air Nitrox final exam. Make sure you're seeking out your local SSI Nitrox instructor to get properly trained. Because I'm going to go ahead and sign off for chapter two. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.